Primark's back, Andrew, Joe. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the Tau Tactica, essentially how to beat the Interceptor of the Tau. This is one of the things most people complain about all the time is Tau, Tau, Tau. And one of the biggest problems they complain about is the Tau Interceptability. Yes, it's cheap. It's five points to give each model the intercept. When they come in reserves, they can fire. Now, people don't overly read the whole point and fundamentals of this, okay? This is the problem. One, it doesn't get to shoot next turn if it fires its weapons. That means it doesn't magically get an extra turn of shooting. There is no extra turn. It loses its next turn. With, you know, that's really important, guys. You've got to remember, if he intercepts, this is when you can kind of outsmart Tau. There's a couple ways to do this, and I'm going to show you the both ways to kind of go at this, and we're going to touch base on the drop pod essential parts of it, because a lot of people think the drop pods are useless now because of Tau. I don't believe so. There's two ways you can do that. One way, you can go aggressive and kind of put your balls to the wall and try to bring them down. It's dangerous, but if used properly, it can be very effective. Two, you must remember, just because you're playing a drop pod list doesn't mean you have to drop them in like idiots and get them all blown up. It doesn't need to work that way. Intercept is basically, I look at it as a defense. This isn't anything new. It's not. It's a little different, but if you remember Grey Knights, when they were overpowered in 5th edition, they had Cotez. Uh, I think I'm saying his name right, Cotez, but he could, uh, basically any model that came down within 12 inches of his unit was allowed to shoot before it did anything. I mean, it was pretty much the same thing. The only difference is with a 12-inch bubble compared to the the Riptide, but it's still essentially there. The only, the better part of Cotez is it didn't use up his shooting and they could still yeah. fire the next turn. In 5th that it was considered free shooting, that when yes. they came down. This is not free shooting. People need to get that in their heads. A Tau does not get a free shooting round if they fire it. And you know what? I'd rather have, if the Tau commander is running with the uh, Riptide, I'd rather have them fire on my turn than on their turn. Why do you ask? A, when the commander has to be in the shooting phase to have his special ability transport over to the units he's with. Which means if he's with the Riptide, A, it does not get to ignore cover, and B, it is not twin linked. Which means if he fires this big plasma charge and it comes down, he has to roll one dice and there's a 1 in 6 chance that it might not even get to shoot. Uh, two, it's not twin linked. Which means there is a good possibility of scatter and it's going to happen. If he fires it next turn, there's no cover, there's no scatter probably because with twin linked, it's dangerous. Have it fire on, on my turn? Great. So what am I going to do? I'm going to show you the first the first base, okay? This is the aggressive pattern to be Tau. And we're gonna, I know every army is different, but Tau is one of those armies that are pretty much a stand-and-shoot list. Now, remember the aggressive uh, formation of the Tau, uh, countering the Tau intercept only works if you have lots of drop pods. You need more then less. Yes, and I, I honestly don't think that works anymore, okay? I think running the nine drop pod list and seven drop pod list that people need to do is it's not a, a fundamental anymore. But I think three drop pods is the key number right now. And I'm going to show you how to beat. And let's plan that the towel is behind a wall, okay? They're at the little fortifications, and I'm going to say they're running one, maybe two riptides, and a unit of broadsides. And that's a pretty scary intercept possibility. You know, they got the intercepts from the smart missiles, the scatter lay, or not, uh, sorry, smart missiles, ion guns, rail rifles, or smart missiles, high yield missiles, whatever. You're going you're to take out the swarm, okay? This is the problem. People get a little bit worried, and they start uh, panicking. You can't panic when you're going against this. You need to drop the fundamental units. And the one thing you do not want to sacrifice dropping is troops. Troops are too important to be sending to their death. You can't just drop them down and lose them. You, this is a turn-based game, and it's only five turns usually, guys, and you can use this as a weapon. You want the tower. The tower player is going to destroy your stuff no matter what. He's going to get it. You're going to lose models. Suck it up. So what? how do you do? You basically you choose, and even though he doesn't know you're doing this, you're choosing the models that you want him to kill. You're coming down with your elites. You're coming down with maybe your heavy support. You're coming down with things that he can shoot and feel good about himself, but he's not getting to turn, shoot on your turn, which means he's not getting to ignore cover on your troops. You're, he's not ignoring cover on them. He's not killing tactical marines without saves. You can't even fire them. The key to Tau is they only have, really, the Riptide with a long range. They don't have too much over 36 inches. If you can keep your squad, your tactical marines, and again, this is a, uh, a marine to Tau kind of thing. So someone messaged me about it. I was really you know, eager to show them how to do this. By doing such a thing, by staying 36 inches, and if it's not a kill point game, combat squad, if you have six troops and now you have 12 troops, good luck, Tau. 
They are not, especially if they're intercepting, they're not going to have the ability to destroy all your hardware plus your 12 troops. They just can't. There's no way of possibilities. A, you're staying at the 36 inches with your troops. You're okay, now you're like, oh, what the hell am I going to do to kill his objectives? And that's when it comes down. You can kill his objectives by killing troops. Tau, weakness, troops. Everyone will talk about Fire Wars. I played them, guys. They have a leadership seven, possibly eight if they're running them. A lot of Tau players don't even like to paint the points on them because they get too expensive and they start adding the sergeants. It's a weakness. So how do you stop it? So first of all, if I was to come down... And I'm going to explain, I would have three drop pods. I would have one drop pod with uh, a tactical squad. The only reason I'm doing this is because I have a mobility tactical squad. I would not give it a heavy weapon. I would not give it a flamer. I would not do anything to spend more points into it. The only purpose of it is to get it across the board if necessary. And it's not a sacrifice. If necessary, I will show you the second version of this, but I'm just getting to the point. The second one, if I'm playing straight marines, only marines, a full stern guard squad, I would not spend tons of points and combi weapons on this. I would not. I just waste. I may take uh, two melters, and I don't even like taking the standard two guns. I rather take two combi melters than two melter guns. Why? Because people run wraith knights like crazy too. These are wraith knight killers. You come down. You use your uh, tactical doctrine. You can re-roll your. Uh, if, even though stern guards are not troops, but they can still re-roll all their ones to hit. Which means, if you dump twenty shots rapid fire because you came down a drop pod. That's about 18 hits. And wounds on twos, that's about 15 wounds. And even if you roll back, you're still going to get you know, 12, 13 wounds on a Wraith Knight with a 3 plus save. Wraith Knight down. Like first turn, boom. And they can't intercept. I'm going to break this down a little bit. Joe's talking a little fast. Uh, so what we're thinking is, generally against Tau, what we see is a commander in a Riptide unit. When a commander in Riptide, so the commander does not fire, the Riptide does. Uh, there's special ships where the commander allows the Riptide to get all these special abilities. So making him uh, intercept you, he does not get these commander abilities. So the intercept fire from this unit is actually less effective than if he did not intercept. Intercept, in this case, is weaker. Yes. Secondary, when he's talking about taking all these different units, it's making him pick and choose. Uh, you always have to take target priority. If you put something in a drop pod, you drop it real close. That isn't important to the game. He's going to shoot at it because he thinks it's a threat because it's close. Might not be your troops. If it's an objective game, which most games are, your troops are still safe because all this intercept fire got wasted on your elite stern guard, stuff like that. And then on your turn, you still got your free roam to run around. You use your one squad in the back to maybe capture a back objective or a line breaker. Then you keep your other squad on your own side to fortify your defenses or wherever it needs to be. I think Marines have some of the best abilities, guys. Like I said, drop down your squad of Stern Guard to come out to take out a Wraith Knight. I know Wraith Knight's not Tau, but it'll drop it. It won't drop um, a Riptide as fast because of 2 plus save, unfortunately. You can't really do anything about it. These are not designed to kill the Riptide. When you come down, Combat Squad, split them up. Now the Riptide has to waste two turns to instant kill them. Okay? So I'm going to say, and this is the best part, okay? These things also are pretty much blockers. When you come down, you come down like this and you put your five-man combat squad now behind all of a sudden, it. can't see him. Even if you can see him, even if you can see one model, you can still shoot. Make your model so you can shoot and see. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is because he doesn't get to ignore cover on this turn. I've come down, my men are placed behind cover, giving me, if he fires his cannon at me, he's only going to maybe hit two models, and I get a cover safe. He doesn't get his special towel. Faggity clown powers. He doesn't. We'll call them commander abilities. We'll call them commander abilities. <laughs> Faggity clown powers is reserved for Eldar. <laughs> so he won't get it. Now, if he even wastes it on a five-man squad, you're laughing. He, you know, he's, if he doesn't, you're going to fire these stern guard. If he doesn't fire, and then if he starts wasting his high-yield missiles and his smart missiles on him, it's still, you've got three-plus saves with your armor. He has nothing to penetrate other than those plasma guns. If you have them scattered in 10 of them, it's going to be rough for him to bring down. If he's really dumb and fires the drop pod, let him. I mean, Tau struggles with armor 12. Let me tell you, it struggles. If it doesn't have fusion guns, they're in trouble. And there's not many people running fusion guns on intercept. I'll tell you right now, they just don't. I, I know they can, but it's very rare. Um, with that being said, so the stern guard comes down. What's the other drop pod? you got to come down with two drop pods. I said three. A command squad. It's cheap, guys. Five guys running grab guns. And they're now with a new rat. I don't know if anyone's seen it or not. They all should know it by now. You can run five grab guns. Not combi grab guns. Grab guns. These guys come down the same way as this. 
and get cover safe. If they're not shot at, they will bring a riptide down. Okay, with using the tactical doctrine again, the first turn you come down, they can re-roll. If they're not intercepted, you don't have to waste it if he get if he get bad luck and he kills them all. It sucks, but it's, again, you're buying turns. You're getting a turn that they wasted on his command squad. It's not that as expensive as it used to be. And if it gets to dump a few shots, wounding on twos against that uh, Riptide, you might cause two or three wounds. I mean, that's not bad. Remember, don't waste your time shooting at the commander. The commander's just there to soak. And position this thing so you're hitting the Riptide, because if you fire at the commander, he's going to take the wounds or look at us for a couple of minutes of waste of shots. Yeah. Don't do that. Bring down the Riptide, because the commander's useless once the Riptide's dead. Don't worry about that one point for first blood. Second of all, if Marines survive, they can kick Tau's butt. Okay, they're tough troops. Uh, if you get, you know, they can rally automatically. There's no if, ands, or buts. If you can lock a Riptide in combat, even with his attacks, he's only going to get three attacks. He's probably going to kill one around. You can keep that Riptide locked in combat. I mean, that's not going to happen against a strong opponent. They're going to know not to get that close to you. But if it happens, it can happen. So you got the command squad coming down, a stern guard's full squad coming down, and you separate. You broke it into two. So now you have three. In theory, you have three squads for that guy to deal with. Tau, you have, you know, the, the Tau player has to deal with these. He has no choice. You also are using these drop pods as cover. They're a mobile cover that you just drop. He, he probably won't even deal with. If he does, great. Who cares? I mean, a kill point games, of course, there's other reasons for it. So that's what I would do, guys. The other thing is, you don't have to come in reserves. I mean, your drop pods, yes, but they don't have to be wasted. You can deploy them way over here, where he can't even shoot them, and have them empty. Your men are allowed to start on the board. There's no yep. rule saying they have They're just a dedicated transport. Start your ten men on the board, and have them sit back there. You're going to hold the objectives a lot stronger than him, and if you want, you can take all these things and put them... I know they might not come down because they scatter, but you can put them down like this, and they come down like this. You're making your own personal wall. You could hide men behind there. He might not have a line of sight of him if he doesn't blow him up. And if he does blow him up, it's a strike three hit to your space marine. Another, another uh, tactic to this, you can stick your T-fire cannon way back. You just built a wall where you can indirect fire. Bang. Yes, that's another second part to the space marines. You have to have T-fire cannons. Okay. T-fire cannons can fire now without line of sight. You can put them behind a building where the, his riptide can't bring him down, and you can rain death on the troops. The whole point of this is to kill troops. When my stern guard come down, if I'm fighting against not a ray thing, I'm not firing at the riptide. I'm decimating that firepower onto crew, onto fire warriors, onto their. I'm going to try to kill as many as I can and make them make a morale check because they they'll usually fail, and you don't have have to kill that many. Lots of times I've said this before, lots of times. Think of what the game holds. If it's a kill point, worry about his units. Yes, but. Five out of six games are objectives. Go drop down with your uh, your stern guard if he doesn't have a wraith knight, something like that. Kill the troops. Yes. Man, he can't capture objectives, so he has to rely on first blood linebreaker warlord, which gives him three points maximum. Exactly, and linebreaker's hard for Tau. He's going to try to come at you with that uh, wonderful riptide if you yeah. didn't kill it, and you could still whittle that down. You know, you can take. I always support Tigerius, dropping him in a Devastator squad to support with some plasma guns, just to fire. I mean, it is hard to withstand it, but your only way of survivability is to keep the Tau guns busy. You sacrifice those three squads at the start. They're not total sacrifice, because they will do something. If you have him split like that, he's got to waste his entire turn of shooting, which means the next turn he does absolutely nothing. So the next turn, you have another drop pod to come in. What do you do with it? Same thing. It's a troop, but now you know you have enough troops. You drop the drop pod down, combat squad, he's going to fire it again. He's going to be like, oh my god, i got to kill these troops. They're right in front of me. Yeah. They don't need to, but he will. The whole time your T-fires are thumping, your yeah. plasma guns are shooting, everything is doing exactly what it has to do to kill the key targets. Forget the broadsides, forget the guys, stay out of 36 inches, bring down the troops, problem done. You just did that with three drop pods. Remember, make sure his intercept is actually doing less work than his regular shooting phase. If he's got commander abilities, even Tigerius abilities only happen on his own turn. When he's shooting you on your turn, he is not as effective as he could be. Exactly, and that's the that is the gravy here, guys. Remember, you always want his guns shooting on your turn. People are like, I hate that they can kill my models on their on my turn. It sucks, but it's better. People that say that have bad reserve deployment. That's yes. why. 
Of course he's going to kill your troops if you line them up in front of him. He's going to intercept and kill you. Exactly. If you come down a little bubble and you have no choice, I feel bad for you. But there's a run, and yes, of course you can't run into the intercept, because the intercept happens at the end of movement. Right. There is that case. And, I mean, the, certain armies used to have to do that. Like, demons used to have to deep strike in a little bubble, and that sucked. But they don't have to anymore. Reserves now are your own discretion. Yes, flyers have to come in reserves. Let's how waste their firepower on, on them. I'm telling you, they don't have that much. The Riptides aren't going to waste their firepower shooting a fire with a strength 7 gun with three shots. If they do, you're laughing. I mean, that's all they got. They Usually most Tau players will take a quad cannon, which is still strength 7. Yes, it's twin-linked, and it'll hit better, but it's still strength 7. That means fives are glances, six are pens. That's not good odds, guys. Now, again, with flyers, jinx saves are counted as cover saves. So if he's firing intercepts and you get... Overshot, you might have to take some jinx saves. If he's shooting you on his turn, he can ignore those saves with his commander slash Tigerius abilities. Yes. So the intercepting your flyers is still a dumb idea because he's getting less potent firepower. Yes. It's all it comes down to. Make sure his firepower is weaker and make it so that he, he does get some abilities still pass on. He does give tank hunters no matter what. So he does get that on your turn. But there is nothing to kill your infantry. Okay, if he wants to fire your drop pod, just sit there and giggle in yourself and going, he fired my drop pod, what a noob. Yeah, he has to choose that ahead of time, whether he chooses Tank Hunter or different. So if you know he chose Tank Hunter, don't fly your plane so close. Bring your drop pod, drop pod closer. Things like that. Make sure you know what he's doing so you can build your tactics around it to lower his percentage. Yes, three, like I said, even three Marines getting Tau into combat yeah. could hold its own against a whole Tau broadside team. That's all it takes. It doesn't take much. So you have to put a little bit of pressure on him to scare him. Because he knows that three Marines can do that. So he's going to have to kill these guys. And he if doesn't, he doesn't, he's going to walk right into exactly. your trap. And the whole time you have your combat squad men in reserves, just in case. Like, I mean, you don't need those Marines on the table. You need enough to survive. You know, you got you got to have some on the table to support. Like, the good thing with drop pods, they don't eat up your, you don't have to have the number of the table because they start. They, it doesn't count towards your numbers. you got to start with your Devastator squad, your T-Fire cans, and Tigerius. That's already four units on the table, okay? You can kind of separate this as you go, but it's already pretty strong. The only unit in reserves would be him, and if it's necessary, combat squad all your men. The cool thing about this drop pod with the troops, it can decide later when it comes down to combat squad, which means that's great. I mean, you're playing a kill point game, you keep them together. If you're not playing a kill point game, separate them. Always separate. You always want Tau have to waste more and more turns because there's only a few guns they have that ignore cover and ignore armor. So you have the armor potential, you've got to use it, and you've got to sacrifice. And that's exactly what you have to do in some war. You have to sacrifice things. You've got to get good at that. If you don't get good at that, you'll never get good at the game. You have to understand that models come off the table. It's a... The only good thing is you're not playing hardcore where every time you kill a model it gets stepped on because that wouldn't be much fun, but it's, it's just a model dying, guys. If your opponent thinks he's doing good because he's killing models, you get discouraged because of intercept. A, it's either your fault or you're getting discouraged you're already giving up the game. Yeah. You came down, you put it right in front of him, he blew it up, and now you're mad at him for blowing it up. You can't be mad at him. You can't. You walk up to someone and punch them in the face and they punch you back, you punch <laughs> them. you got to use your tactics to survive, guys. And like I said... Sacrifice none essential. Even if he fires at a T fire, you don't want to lose your T fire, so I showed you the purpose of that. But if he does, it's one turn. Yeah. One turn that Riptide had to use to fire at that T fire, not your troops. If he's not killing your troops, you are holding objectives, and he's going to have a hard time. Tau does not come to you and take over your objective, Tau shoots you off yeah. your objective. And just keeps theirs. <laughs> exactly. That's the standard Tau tactic. Yeah. So, I mean, the only thing they use the assault with is their Riptides. They'll move with the Riptides. But against Space Marines, you got to be careful. Because, like I said, five Space Marines get into a Riptide. They can hold their own. Yes, it ignores cover with their AP-2s. But he's weapon skilled like two or something. He hits them on fours. And that's 50% chance. And, yes, he kills them on twos. But Space Marines, you know, if he falls back, big deal. Or they stay locked in combat. You know, who cares? Uh, not too much else I can touch base in this. Like I said, standard Space Marines have some potential to devastate, guys. T-Fires are amazing now. Uh, Devastators with Tigerius, amazing. Tactical Doctrine in its own as Ultramarines is amazing. There's so many ways to bring down Tau, and I told you, Tau's weakness is their troops. So they're not running them an ally. Four plus save, or six plus save. Kill them. Because they're coming to the table. You can survive, he can't. You have longer range firepower. You can take every tactical squad that you bring, can take a last cannon 
why are you bringing the lads? Can't only twenty points. And if you want to start the table because you have to, because you're not going to sacrifice by dropping them in front of them, line up your guys. That's six last cans firing around, plus your man that'll shoot up. Don't just give away free kills. I mean, you don't have to. Like I said, you can deploy a wall like this. Try to get like this. I know this is scatter potential. I understand that. But if, you, if there's an objective here, the only thing that can come right over there is a riptide. He has to jump over there because he's a jump troop. Nothing else can just walk right through Can't your models. Through, remember, they have to remain one inch away from models. It still counts as a vehicle. Yeah. I mean, vehicles, yes, of course. You don't have to stay one inch. You can move up to, But it's... A, let them come and make a wall. You have cover saves, blah, blah, blah. So uh, any more questions on this? We have a lot of ideas. Tau is not as powerful as you seem to think it is. Tau has just been made strong because people are exploiting it and not understanding it. And that's the key to most enemies. A lot of times what happens with Tau is that they go up against players and as soon as the player gets intercepted, they get so discouraged that they lost models before they even got to do anything with them that they make stupid mistakes, they rush through the game, they're like, oh, what's the point? I've already lost my good units and all this. When you see they have interceptors, don't give them anything to shoot at or give them the specific thing you want them to shoot at. Things like, that. like, who says you don't have to drop pod right in their face? You don't have to do that every time. Don't worry even have, about, like, like we yeah. said, you don't have to be in that drop pod. Worry about what the game is for. If it's for objectives, you don't have to kill everything. It's not about... Uh, overrunning your opponent. It's nice, yes, because if you table someone, it's a victory, but as long as you have those objectives on the last turn, it doesn't matter if he's got his full army Exactly. Left. If it's Relic, surround the Relic with <laughs> drop pods. Let them try to come to the Relic. They're going to have a hard time. And you can position. If you've got two or three drop pods down, you can position a five-man tactical squad yeah. invisible. We yeah. have them behind so they just can't be seen spread out. He won't even be able to shoot them unless he has smart missiles. And even then, smart missiles aren't going to bring down Marines that fast. Poof, really hard to see. And even if they do, cover save. Yeah, and with cover saves, you can go to ground until you need it. That can bring your cover save up to, you know, a four plus save. That's pretty impressive. If it's, you know, worthy of yeah. the three plus armor save losing. So, there's not too much more on this. We just want to do a quick touch base to show you that no army is unbeatable. They just have to have, and of course, some armies are really weak now, but Tau is not as broken as it seems. Right. Same as Eldar. These Stern Guard will bring down Wraith Knights a turn. Yes, unfortunately, once you bring them out, you've kind of lost your edge. But if you can sacrifice a Stern Guard squad to bring down a Wraith Knight, I think it's a good trade-off. Not to mention, they got to spend a whole turn killing that Stern Guard squad. So, uh, more to come. Please subscribe, guys, and we have more videos on the way.